has scored 11 runs on 15 hits in the game last night and hit three home runs. And the two clubs have split the first two games of this series. Trey Mancini, he is hitting 293 for the season. He's got an 11-game hit streak, batting 471. He has 27 hits against the Blue Jays this season in 18 games. He has absolutely killed the Blue Jays, hitting 370. Dwight Smith Jr. is in the cleanup spot. Rio Ruiz, Hanser Alberto, DJ Stewart's in rank. They round out the lineup to face Jacob Wankis back. 13th career start. Uh, Jacob has been up and down. He's looking for his first win since August the 16th. That's when the team faced the Seattle Mariners. He beat them pitching into the sixth inning. He followed that up with a very good start against the Dodgers, and that's been up and down ever since. Last time out against the Yankees, I thought he was aggressive. Allowed three runs over five innings with six strikeouts. The most strikeouts for him since way back in July. He only got touched up for three runs. All of those runs coming via the home run. So we are said Jonathan VR switch hitter is in the box. Waggis back is ready. Here's the first pitch. It's upstairs for a ball and we are underway. The roof is now being pushed back. They open it up about 15 20 minutes ago. It's comfortable here 22 degrees. And you can see the roof is in the process of going all the way back. There's a drive to right field. Billy McKinney has a beat on it. One up, one down. Let's take a look at the rest of the defense. McKinney is in right. Tay Oscar's in center. And Derek Fisher's in left. Kevin Biggio continues to play very good at second. His 81st start at second base, he's committed four errors. His last error, you have to go back to July the 30th at Kansas City. He was telling me the other day credits Louis Rivera to really helping him defensively to get his feet into his field and getting him into a good position to field the baseball. Here's Austin Hayes the center fielder he takes it upstairs. Hayes was 0 for 4 in the game last night he had a couple of walks he walked in the score to run in the eighth inning. And his seven game hit streak come to an end last night. He drives this one into center. That'll get down for a hit. Tejas Hernandez plays it on a couple of hops. A one out single for Hayes, and that'll bring Trey Mancini to the plate. Mancini's DHing tonight. He's got 11 game hit streak, and over his last seven games against the Blue Jays, impressive numbers. Just wearing out the Jays this year over those last seven games. The batting average over 500, 16 RBIs, and I said, boy, Trey told him today I said you have been really hitting the Blue Jays hard you got 27 hits against them this season and he had no idea he had hit so well against Toronto the highest number of hits against the Blue Jays this season is 32 by DJ LeMayhew Rafael Devers and Austin Meadows both have 29 hits and then Mancini is tied with Xander Bogarts at 27. Goes after the first pitch. Here he comes after it. Makes a nice scoop. One is second. Back to first and double play. Well done by the Blue Jays infield. Jury, a little bit of an offline play. He gets the double play. Jury's got great hands at third. Nice turn by Bishu. Comes across the bag to complete the play. Just five pitches. And Waggis back is through the first. Mancini has 27 hits against the Blue Jays. Rowdy Tellez, Teoscar Hernandez, Brandon Drury, Derek Fisher, and Luke Bailey round out the lineup. They will face Gabriel Enoa. Held the Blue Jays to three runs over six in the third innings last week. Didn't walk a batter in one of his best starts since moving from the bullpen to the starting rotation. He suffered a loss in that game, even though he had that season high tie in six in the third innings of work. Threw 77 pitches, 51 of them for strikes. Billy McKinney hits it hard to right. This ball has got a chance. It is gone. Billy McKinney with another home run. His 12th home run of the season, and he jump starts the Blue Jays' offense tonight. That has been a theme for the Baltimore Orioles pitching staff this year, giving up home runs. That's the 28th home run that Enoa has given up. And he hasn't thrown that many innings. Billy McKinney elevated to that leadoff spot again. Homers again. And that was easy. A fastball right over the middle of the plate. The last time he was in the leadoff spot, he had two home runs. That was in New York. 
McKinney had that two homer game in New York on Sunday and this one's right center cut out over the plate and he didn't miss it boy. He will give up his share of home runs. McKinney also was in the leadoff spot against the Orioles had a good game here in game number one but he has a good start to his night tonight. Gravick Valera switch hitter batting left handed. Well, what a good start for Billy McKinney and he goes down to the veteran Austin Smoke talking about that swing. One and two on the ground. Chris Davis will underhand to the pitcher covering one away. Well, the fans come out here and they hope to get a foul ball and this fan did a nice job of catching this foul ball barehanded. While he had a pen in his hand he's keeping the score and he says no problem let me get this foul ball. Nachos in one hand drop the pen in the other hand and say here I got a baseball. How about that. Good sign, job. Him, sign him up. So here's Kevin Biggio. Takes a breaking ball on the outside corner. Kevin has reached base in 25 straight games. Let's see. Second longest such streak for a Blue Jays rookie. He is tied with Reed Johnson. Johnson had a 25 game streak in 2003. Russ Adams has the rookie record for the Blue Jays. 27 straight games reaching base. Let's get it out of the way early again. Mentioned that Enoa hasn't thrown a lot of innings. That's a lot of home runs. Just 107 innings pitched this year, and his 28th home run that he's given up. Dylan Bundy also had been giving up home runs frequently. He gave up a home run last night. It was the 29th home run he surrendered this season. 2 2 outside 3 and 2 last start against the Blue Jays he pitched effectively his slider was good his fastball he threw it about 53 percent of the time Threw a lot of change ups. His change up and slider he was hitting on him. Vigio hits it in the air to right that's going to hang up for D.J. Stewart the right fielder two away. I think he may have thrown an off speed pitch there and a full count got the fly ball the right. Last start it was basically three pitches fastball slider and a change up. Had the Blue Jays out in front really pitched well pitched into the seventh inning just the second time this season he has done that just gave up three earned runs. Lanny Guerrero Jr. is the D.H. tonight. He's got 27 hits against the Orioles, as we mentioned. That's more than any other hitter against Baltimore this season. Labor Torres had 26 hits against Baltimore. The difference is Torres had those 26 hits, 13 of them were home <laughs> runs. 0 oh 2. When do you learn Chase. your lesson? And not throw him pitches for strikes. <laughs> if he's going to hit that many home runs against you, walk him. You know where he is. He's over at first base. He gets a piece of that breaking ball and stays alive. Right, he's had a good rookie season. Coming into this game, batting 274. 456 at bats. That's pretty good. And he started out with a bit of an injury. And he gets another breaking ball. That's the pitch right there that has been giving him trouble lately. And Blue Jays feel like he's leaking a little bit towards the pitcher where his his weight is going forward before he swings the bat. And then you're going to have a lot of problems against pitchers with sliders down away especially right handers you can handle the ball in you know if you start to leap towards the plate and drift towards the pitcher that's ball away he saw the catcher Austin wins offering several different pitches but you know I didn't want to come inside didn't want to throw him a breaking ball wanted to stay away with that fastball now they're going to try to come 
away with a breaking ball and Vladdy hits it to VR backhanded nice throw in time. But Billy McKinney gets the Blue Jays off and running tonight. McKinney has been swinging the bat well. Two home runs on Sunday against New York. He leads things off with his 12th home run of the season with the Blue Jays out in front. The brim of his helmet on Thursday. Bo Bichette was out here on the field getting some early work in symptom free. Bichette is being closely monitored by the medical staff while he continues concussion protocol. He told me that trainers continue to massage in and around his neck area and regularly ask him questions as part of his now daily routine. Now he has been watching games from inside the clubhouse and today is the first time he's able to sit with his teammates in the dugout. If it were up to him he'd love to return for the final couple of games if he passes protocol and gets the green light and that is a big if best case scenario Bo told me he could DH Sunday in the final game of the regular season but Buck you can understand why they are in no hurry at all. Now yeah, Hazel I don't think there's any reason for him to come back and play and even if he did play he'd been rusty and I don't think it's fair to him I think it's just put a bow on this season bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Tampa Bay is going to be trying to get into the playoffs. Yeah. I think you have to put your your best teams out there not a guy to see if he's he's OK. I think he's going to be all right. Just pack it up get ready for spring training next year. Yeah you know what and he did great. He really put on a show with the bat in the field and I think he could be very satisfied hitting 311 if this is the end of the season played in 46 games and he did a nice job. This is Dwight Smith Jr. The cleanup hitter. He checked his swing. They asked for the appeal down the third. It's denied. It's three and zero. Oh. Smith Jr. has had a good run here against the Blue Jays. Three for four last night. Two yeah. singles, a home run. He drove in a pair. His former team. He says to have a game against Toronto. I try not to get too hyped about it. But it was a moment I'll cherish for sure. He says he loves playing here in this ballpark. Hey, anytime you go up against your former team and then you do something dramatic like he did last night, it's always good feeling. Hit his first career home run against his former team last night. He draws the leadoff walk here. Beauty Tone is the official paint of the Toronto Blue Jays, only available at home hardware. Here's how. We have just one more series after this game tonight. It'll be the Tampa Bay Rays, and it's a one of a new suite they have set up here at Rogers Center. It says Rio Ruiz, the third baseman. Ruiz had an RBI single in the eighth inning in last night's game. He finished up that game one for four. Ruiz with 12 homers, 45 RBIs, hitting just 236 for the season. That's going to be out of play. They talk about Waggis Pack. He's 25 years old. He's making his 13th start of the season. And I went back and I looked at his last five starts, and his numbers aren't that good. 0 and 4 with a 7.65 on run average. And then I looked at who he pitched against. He pitched against the Braves here, down in Atlanta against the Braves, at Tampa Bay, here against the Yankees, and against the Yankees in New York. All postseason teams. It's a tough stretch but that's life in the American League East. The start before that little stretch you're just talking about might have been his finest start of the season. That was at Los Angeles against the Dodgers who are going to be another playoff team. How about shutout baseball for seven innings. One hit the only hit he surrendered was to Kenta Maeda. The Dodgers pitcher. I think one thing that Jacob is going to focus on going forward in this game and during the offseason and spring training cutting down his pitches per innings he's averaged 17 point four pitches per inning. And you know what the average in the. 
major leagues this year is just about 16 and a half pitches per inning. There are only two pitchers in all of baseball that have averaged under 15 pitches this inning this season. Mike Soroka leads the majors. He's averaged 14.6 pitches per inning. Hunjin Ryu of the Dodgers 14.9. The only two qualified pitchers throwing fewer than 15 under pitches 15 inning. 15 would be ideal in this era of the strikeout and the era of the home run. That would be really nice. I think the best thing he can do I think be a little bit more aggressive which he was against the Yankees especially pitching inside and, and keeping the ball down and filling up the strike zone in the lower parts of the strike zone. He's Just being able to command the strike zone. Yeah he pitches where you want. He's missed a few when he's gotten into trouble he's had those long innings he had a start where he threw four innings at Atlanta he threw 87 pitches in four innings. Ground ball. Flip to second back to first another double play nice job by Valera. As he's playing shortstop he was on the first base side of second he flipped it back to Drury who made a good throw to Rowdy Tellez second double play of the ball game for the Jays. Well if you want it you got to come and get it that's exactly what Valera does he comes and gets that ball and then backhands it. The Blue Jay infielders were out here early today around four o'clock working game speed like they do every now and then game speed ground balls and it's paid off for them. a couple of double plays already tonight. It was an unusual six five three double play but you will see it more often with left handers and the Blue Jays playing in the shift. Hands are Alberto. Alberto batting three oh eight at the start of play tonight. That ball in the dirt. It's had a good year. But his September just 244 coming to play tonight has dropped that average just above 300. He's had a good year. He's had over 500 at bats. This ball is in the alley and Billy McKinney running over the right field to make some nice catch. Jacob Waggis pack a couple of double plays so far in this game. Welcome back to Rogers Center. The EJ shop right here at Rogers Center has all the jerseys. A lot of those rookie jerseys have been a hot item. Season is winding down, and the rookies have held their own this season. Blue Jays have really had a bunch of rookies come up, make their debut, get an awful lot of great experience. Rowdy Telez takes that backdoor breaking ball. Rowdy tried to call timeout there as you know a quick pitch to be called timeout didn't get it from the home plate umpire and then had to stay in there and watch that slider come across the plate. That's the pitch that is so key to Rowdy's success being able to lay off that high fastball he's got the steady diet of that and he's got to learn to recognize whether it's a strike or not. He knows that, that. He knows that, and he knows what he needs to work on this offseason. Lower that chase percentage. Guillermo Martinez was saying, you know, he knows what he needs to do. Lay off that high fastball and the breaking ball in the dirt. If he does that, one of the ways you can do that is the first fastball that you see that's a strike. Go ahead and swing the bat. He did that to get a base hit in last night's game. Outside. Two balls and two strikes to Les. Leading off the second, Blue Jays have a one nothing lead thanks to Billy McKinney's 12th home run of the season. Full count. Task Hernandez is on deck. Now Oscar has set career highs in home runs and RBIs this season. 3 2 pitch. Foul back. Vladdy Guerrero kicking back as the DH here tonight. We mentioned Vladdy's had a full season of work. Early in the season, they had a lot of scheduled off days, but he's still got 100, 457 at bats. Telez swings and misses. That's the first strikeout of the ball game for you, Noah. 
He Noah had six of them in his last start against the Blue Jays one off his season high this time. That's that pitch again. It's right at the strike zone right at the top of the strike zone and he can't come up with it. That has nothing to do with your chase percentage. It has more to do with shortening out your swing. And that's what Rowdy's been doing. He's been watching a lot of tape of good hitters in the American League trying to replicate their swings, their short swings. I think if he shortens up his swing, he starts to catch up to that high fastball. He doesn't have a long, he doesn't have to have a long swing as much power as he has. Here's Hernandez. He takes the first pitch outside for ball one. There's a base hit to left field. Played on a couple of hops by Smith. Hey Oscar it's the second hit of the night for the Blue Jays that is a solid base hit it looked like they wanted to go up and in and he knows fastball right where Tay Oscar likes it down and in he's lucky that ball didn't leave the ballpark so here's Brandon Drury he like Hernandez starting this game hitting 221. The major league average this season is 253. The Blue Jays as a team batting 237. That's the lowest batting average in the majors. They hit home runs. But they've got to improve on their ability to get on base. Raise that batting average, and with that, you're going to score more runs and win more ball games. Brandon has a home run against Genoa. He is one for one. Upstairs, ball on the strike. Genoa doesn't look as sharp as he did down in Baltimore. He had some quick innings against the Blue Jays. He was keeping that fastball. He can sink it every now and then. He was keeping it down. Blue Jays hit a lot of ground balls. Right out in front of home plate against him. That's outside. You know, I had a couple of double plays turned behind him, he ended up a play in the second and one in the third. And then he ran into trouble in the fourth. Back to back home runs, Biggio and Guriel, and Vladdy Guerrero Jr. hit that one that was. Out of the ballpark, but brought back into the ballpark by the center fielder, Austin Hayes. Two balls and two strikes on the Blue Jays' third baseman. Blue Jays are nine and five in their last 14 games. Oscar doesn't run much just four steals in seven attempts. Blue Jays as a team they just don't have much team speed. They have a couple of guys who can run. But they don't choose to run. Tay Oscar I think could steal 10 15 bases a year but. Blue Jays are a team that just don't really utilize the stolen base. That's outside. Full count now. Now here's the question for the manager, Charlie Montoya. Do you start to runner? Jury's prone to the strikeout. He struck out 110 times. You got a lefty bat coming up next. Is he no a strikeout pitcher? No. I don't think so. I think he can throw some ground balls though, so I'm starting the runner. I, I'm playing aggressive, trying to add to my lead. You take your chance that he's going to make contact. Hernandez is running. There's a ground ball to third. They stay out of the double play because they started the runner. So Hernandez moves to second base on the ground up. Good call, Pat. So with two outs and a man in second, Derek Fisher comes to play. He got the first hit of the game last night against Dylan Bundy. And it was a ball in, and he turns on it. That is a rope to right field. A line drive just over the wall in right field. That's what he can do. He's got some great exit velocity when he squares it up. His seventh home run of the season. So he's back into the lineup tonight against Enoa. That ties his career high. 
Seven home runs. Though it extends his career high. He has seven home runs. First time he has reached that number. Combined between Houston and Toronto. And a breaking ball for a strike. Dave Hutchins has been a real asset for Guillermo Martinez. Martinez in his first season as a hitting coach. Hutchins has been a hitting coach for Houston, for Oakland. He's done it a long time. They work well together. Wisdom. Lots of wisdom. He's also managed in the minor leagues. You know, there's so many things that you have to think about as a hitting coach. First and foremost, you got to know your player. How much information can you give him? Does he accept criticism? Is he open to change? All those different things you have to know before you start making adjustments. Oh, and two. Inside for ball one. Blue Jays lead it one to nothing. Ask Hernandez at second base. Call strike three. Fisher caught looking at a fastball, you know, with two strikeouts in the innings. The Blue Jays leave a base runner. We'll go to the third. It's a three in another. My body feels great. This is the first time I've pitched through September, but I think it's more of a mental fatigue rather than physical fatigue for me. If there's one thing he's learned about pitching at this level, it's that every pitch is important. Pitching here requires a higher, more intense level of focus on each and every pitch, and that focus can be draining. But Wagaspak says if they needed me, I could probably string a few more innings together. Buck. Well, I think Pete Walker tell you he needs him, especially after the last two games, and he needs him to pitch deep into this ball game. He hasn't had a seven inning outing since that start in LA against the Dodgers on the twenty second of August and the way the pitchers have been banged up lately. Blue Jays need a start. Blue Jays only had 12 starts this season where a pitcher has gone seven or more innings. The last time they went five it was Wagaspak's pack start against the Yankees. They just have not been able to get some length out of that starting rotation. They've used openers. Yes. Where they've come in and thrown one inning but the bulk guy behind him has only been able to be good for four innings. Yeah, six innings, seven would be ideal from a starter. Oh, yeah, that's what you want from your starter. 21 outs from your starter. You got to have that ability. I think the pitching staff would vote to have Vladdy Guerrero play third base and not DH. <laughs> <laughs> At least those guys in the front row right there. Were, uh, Can somebody do something with this guy? He needs to play third base more. <laughs> 20 year old DH just doesn't work. Got too much time on his hands. Too much energy, <laughs> right? He likes to play around, have a good time. Yeah. Hey, I got nothing to do till I hit next time. So I'm going to bug everybody on the bench. Get yeah. out, go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to coach. Call strike three. Stewart is called out on strikes. That's the first out of the inning. One down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. A lot going on in baseball tonight. Well, you bet it will. Tampa Bay will be here over the weekend, the three game series. In that game against New York, Charlie Morton is starting for Tampa Bay, looking for his 16th win of the season. Jonathan Weisiga, the starter for New York. Tampa Bay will be off on Thursday. Same for the Blue Jays, and then they'll pick things up on Friday night. Tyler Glasnow is scheduled to open up the series. The Blue Jays have not yet announced their starter for that game. I think we're going to see Blake Snell in that series also. 
they can't afford to lose so they got to throw their best. Yeah and you got to get in first and foremost. So Tampa Bay. They are half game behind Oakland. In the wild card they have a second spot in the wild card but they're only half a game ahead of Cleveland. The high fly ball off the bat of Chris Davis Fisher the left fielder is there. Two down. A strikeout and a fly ball for Waggis back. Boba Shit, good to see him back on the bench. First time he's been on the bench since he's been dealing with the concussion. And according to Nicky Huffman, said Bo's getting his personality back, starting to feel a little bit more normal. Baseball activities have amped up a bit, but they're still not close to being able to. Put him back on the field. It was good to see him on the field today, just throwing a baseball around, being part of the team. Nobody wants to end their season that way. Nobody. But I tell you what, baseball's done a terrific job of addressing any kind of head injury. All the players go through a baseline test in spring training, so they have those numbers to compare when there is a head injury, any kind of blow to the head, and they do a great job nowadays. First and foremost, they put the players' health top of the list. This is the catcher Austin wins. He's catching for a second straight night. Ball outside. It's two balls and a strike. That concussion protocol can be six pages long, where they have to get back on to and answer some of those questions and some of that baseline. Questions. There's a base hit for wins. It could be two. Fisher over to cut it off. He bobbles it. Wins will take a big turn, but he'll stop it first. A two out single. Let's check in again with Jamie Campbell. It sure is Jamie at the start of play today the Cardinals had a two and a half game lead over Milwaukee now they lose so it's down to two games Milwaukee is ahead of Cincinnati eight to one in the third in Cincinnati so it could be down to a game and a half after play tonight Milwaukee plays a final game in Cincinnati tomorrow the Cardinals are off as the R gets a base hit into center. Wins is headed for third. He will get there standing up. Back to back two out singles here in the third for Baltimore. So we're talking about the National League Central. St. Louis will fly to St. Louis and take on the Cubs on Friday. They'll play a three game series against the Cubs. So now the Cardinals have lost two in a row. Milwaukee has won five in a row coming into play tonight. And they got a grand slam and a home run from a grand slam from Ryan Braun and a solo shot from Eric Thames in the first inning tonight. St. Louis has played one more game, so they will be off tomorrow while Milwaukee still has to play another game. And they're going to go up against Cincinnati's best, Castillo, a pitcher for the Reds. That'll be tomorrow in Cincinnati. Luis Castillo is 15 and 7. Chase Anderson will pitch for the Brewers. He's 7 and 4. And if the Reds win. It, it goes to two games with three to play. If the Brewers win, it goes to one. One game ahead with three to play. Austin Hayes, the center fielder, singled his first time up. VR is always a threat to run. He's got 38 stolen bases. Been thrown out nine times. He's still getting. Those mitts on over there at first base you can see those sliding mitts he's very aggressive when he dives into the bag he doesn't want to jam any of those fingers he wants to tuck that thumb in. That's why you wear that sliding mitt not running here and the pitch is inside two and oh. Look mainly catching for just the second time since coming off the injured list. He caught in New York. The Blue Jays as a team have done a great job of throwing out base stealers this season. They're fifth in the majors 
in caught stealing percentage. Not running here. Ground ball. Valera bobbles it goes to first and nice pick at first. Brownie Teles picked up his shortstop Bravik Valera who bobbled it and then decided to go across the diamond. The Orioles are going to have a look at the play at first base. And Cousins a bench coach is having a look but Valera he had a chance to go to second but decides to throw across the diamond and Rowdy Teles picks it. Well I tell you it looks close but they're not going to challenge it. Nice pick at first by Teles. See it begins October the 1st and you can catch it all on Sportsnet. Going to be the wild card game in the National League and on the second the American League wild card game. The division series begins. National League will be at the Dodgers. The wild card winner will be at the Dodgers October 3rd. The American League will start on October 4th. The American League Division Series. Lots of baseball coming up. VR strong arm throws out Luke Maley to start the bottom of the third. That'll bring up Billy McKinney, and he let off the ball game the first inning, taking this fastball from Gabriel Inoa. Snackcast AI powered by AWS. He takes that fastball, hits it out of here 102 miles an hour, just scrapes it over the fence 364 feet for his 12th home run of the season. Billy's making the most of some opportunities to play here late in the season. Had his first multi home run game of his career Sunday at Yankee Stadium. And he hit a couple of rockets. Seventh inning home run. And a ninth inning home run. The ninth inning home run was a laser that got into the bullpen in right center. And here's how baseball is. First game of this series, he singled in the ninth inning. Remember that? Blue Jays were down by a couple of runs. He singled, got pinch ran for by Anthony Alfer. He had had another base hit and scored a run also at the beginning of that game. And who ended up being the star of that game? Anthony Alfer. Anthony Alfer had the walk off home run in the 15th inning, pinch and running for Billy McKinney. And Anthony had a hit also in the 13th inning, a stolen base. Kenny takes one on the corner. It's three and one. You know, it has allowed just two hits. The Orioles have three hits, but the Blue Jays have the lead. Kenny got a pretty good pitch to hit. That's how you swing on a three one fastball, isn't it? Let it go. Try and hit another home run. You don't want to massage anything into the outfield or anything like that. You want to hit that ball with some authority, and Billy took a healthy rip at it. Hunter Wendell's stat is the home plate umpire tonight. You can hear him say three and two. Full count with one out. Ball four. 96, but down and in. First walk issued by you know it tonight. Billy McKinney's reached base both times he's come to the plate. They don't get Gravick Valera up. Valera starting at shortstop with Bo Bichette unavailable. Richard Rania, he too is on the shelf temporarily. He got hit on the right elbow batting against Luis Severino in New York and still hasn't been able to play since. It's a perfect time to put in the hit run on on the first pitch. You just Not walked running. a guy. Yep. You've got a, a guy who can make contact, put the ball in play in front of your three and four hitter. You know he was going to get a fastball first pitch. And he fouled it back. Blue Jays did not run, did not start that runner at first base. Inside. You were just talking about Richard Arania and his elbow. Did you see him throwing left handed today? <laughs> I did. 
He was throwing off the pitching mound for batting practice. He wasn't throwing to a hitter. He was just throwing as a pitcher, and he had a pretty good delivery. He was bringing it. You can see the right arm with that compression sleeve to protect the elbow, so he was throwing left-handed. There's a drive to right. Stewart is there. He makes the catch. McKinney hustles back. Two outs and bring Kevin Biggio to the game. Into bat with two outs and Kevin has reached base in 25 straight games and the numbers for that streak are pretty impressive. Making some adjustments at the plate, some swing adjustments, trying to level out that swing and swing through the baseball instead of trying to lift it. It's there, it's a constant game where you're trying to improve yourself and making adjustments and and he understands that he understands what he has to do to be successful to hit the ball hard. Kevin was talking the other day also about you know I have to be able to hit the ball with authority the other way to the left and left center field and when I do that I know that I'm level my swing is level and I'm swinging through the baseball. I want to get away from trying to lift the ball and coming into my swing and then out of my swing. He does a lot of work in the cages trying to perfect that swing and he knows this this off seasons there's going to be a lot of work to try and perfect it. Yeah I tell you what this has been a great season for all the Blue Jays rookies a chance to test themselves against the best in the world. Kevin has a great eye that's just a natural thing he's been able to recognize ball or strike right out of a hand more often than not. And then not swing at it. The discipline not to swing at that ball when it's off the plate. Inside three and one. Kevin has a 25 game streak of reaching base. His father the Hall of Famer Craig Bijou reached base in 41 straight games. Back in 1998. And I bet you Kevin doesn't know that. <laughs> That's a quarter of the season. <laughs> 41 straight games. 3 1, 2 outs. That's ball four, and he will extend that to 26 games in a row, reaching base. Hernan Alvarez of the Houston Astros has reached base in 26 games in a row. He is now one behind Russ Adams for the all time reaching base streak by a Blue Jays rookie. Adams did it in 27. That'll build that on base percentage up. Take your share of walks, get your hits, create RBI opportunities for the next two hitters, Guerrero and Teles. 69 walks now for Biggio. This is his 97th game of the season. Now here's Vladdy Guerrero Jr. grounded out shortstop his first time up. Two on two outs. Way outside. Guerrero is going to have to hit something on the outer half of the plate. And Noah has not thrown him anything inside. Yeah, unless he makes a mistake inside, he's going to have to catch something out in front. He's, his strength is staying in the middle of the field, Laddie's, when he is hitting the ball with authority back through the middle. But teams have been really throwing him a lot of sliders, especially right handed pitchers that go away from right handed hitters. Maybe he'll make a mistake inside. They got a fastball right at the knees. What you can't do is go up there guessing what they're going to do to you. I think in these RBI situations you you look for the ball. Try and hit the ball hard have a plan until you at least get the two strikes. Pick out a pitch that you want to hit. Just barely foul. He turned on that inside pitch. Guerrero hasn't hit a home run since August 22nd at Dodger Stadium a span of 103 at bats without a home run. But he's hitting for an average and I think he's going to learn how to hit home runs. And he's got power there's no question about that 15 home runs so far this season. 
Yeah, he wants to be a great player. Again, that pitch away. He's got to reach for it. He's been drifting towards the pitcher a little bit too much. They're trying to get him to stay on that back leg just a little bit longer. Watch the front side start to drift before he swings the bat. You got to let the swing bring you forward. You don't want to drift off that back leg too soon. Upstairs two and two now. Mainly grounded out to start the inning, but then McKinney walked, and then after a Valera flyout, Kevin Biggio drew a walk. First and second, two outs. The Blue Jays with a one nothing lead. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. with a two ball, two strike count. Now it's a full count. So the base runners will be moving on the pitch. Billy McKinney has homered and walked. He's at second. Kevin Bijou has walked. He's at first. And Guerrero with the full count. Telez on deck. Manoa trying to get out of this situation in the third. There go the runners. Little tapper right in front of home and foul. You can tell he's trying to tell himself to stay back, stay back, but he's jumping out there and leaking out there a little bit too quick. You know, it is one in nine this season with a 565 earned run average. Trey Mancini is the DH tonight. He like Vladdy Guerrero trying to stay occupied when he's not in the field. Cut on and miss. Guerrero strikes out the Blue Jays will strand a couple of base runners. We'll go to the fourth. It's a one nothing Blue Jays lead. Now success, Blue Jays reliever Justin Schaefer, who played with and against Mancini since they were in T-ball. The Florida native Schaefer from Lake Wales and Mancini from Winter Haven know each other's game very well. Now in the majors together, Schaefer called their decades-long baseball connection a fun little fact he wanted to share. Buck? Yeah, it's pretty cool, and that's why it was kind of funny when they two faced each other in Baltimore. Schaefer hit Mancini with the pitch and some of the Baltimore media thought it could have been intentional. Mancini says man we've been pals since we were six. He said that ball just got away from me. It hurt but I knew there was no intent behind it. It hit him in the thigh I think so that'll that'll leave a mark but everything's OK. He has worn out the Blue Jays hit into a double play his first time up. And as good a player as he is he's a better person. A uh, terrific guy. I mean, he went to Notre Dame, and he and Kevin Biggio have a connection there. Biggio also went to Notre Dame a little bit later than Mancini. But Trey was there when Kevin's older brother was at Notre Dame, so they've known each other for quite a while. So they got to catch up here once again, and I'm sure they talk a lot of baseball. Both of them are baseball gym rats, if you will. They both love to play. His manager says he's been hitting the ball hard almost every at bat. What a September it's been. He's hit 389 in September, an OPS over one, seventh best in Orioles history. Change up in there right at the top of the strike zone. Two balls and two strikes. Jacob Waggis pack. Good start to this ball game. He's been able to get a couple of ground balls turned behind him. One in the first, one in the second. 2 2 pitch. Lays off that breaking ball. Mancini is hot. He's got an 11 game hit streak, batting 471 during that hit streak. So he is seeing the ball very well, and that's how he's able to lay off those borderline pitches. Left on deck yesterday in the top of the ninth, dying, denying him a chance for a six hit game. He was five for five in the game last night. It's the they've had four players this season pick up five hits in a game. Mancini, Alberto, Santander, and Nunez have all had five hit games for the Orioles this season. 
called strike three. Mancini will walk back to the dugout. Second strikeout for Waggers Pack. Take on any project with home hardware. Proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. Here's how. Season is winding down. It's the final game the Blue Jays and Orioles will play this season. Blue Jays will have an off day tomorrow. And the Tampa Bay Rays will be here Friday, the final homestand of the season, final series of the season. Baltimore will go to Boston. They too will have an off day tomorrow before they wrap things up against the Red Sox at Fenway Park. Bright Smith Jr. walked his only time up. High pop up on the infield. Rowdy Telez, the first baseman in fair ground, makes the catch. Two away. Jacob Waggis back is doing exactly what Pete Walker and Johnny Montoya would hope he would do. Throwing a lot of strikes, pitching ahead, getting quick outs. Get deep into this game. They used 10 pitchers in the first game in this series. Nine. Eight pitchers in yesterday's game. Well, they have used so many pitchers, they've added two more pitchers to their roster today. Yancy Diaz and Ryan Doe were both added to the roster. And Doe was on the roster for a couple of days, Baltimore and New York, then they designated him for assignment. They brought him back. There's Yancy Diaz, who pitched earlier in the season for the Blue Jays, came up from double A against Baltimore at Camden Yards. And they were able to get Ryan Dole on the 40 man roster by putting Lourdes Guriel on the 60 man or 60 day disabled list. So he's on the 40 man. And we'll finish out the season with the Blue Jays. They just needed some arms. Yeah. Big swing by Ruiz. One ball, two strikes. Upstairs. You know, you talk about the Blue Jays using a lot of pitchers the last couple of games. Last night in the majors, 200 pitchers were used. 200. 200. In 15 games. 2 2 pitch. Cut on and miss. Nice job by Waggers. Pack three up, three down in the fourth with a couple of strikeouts. He's got three strikeouts so far in this game and has the lead. Three more games on the Blue Jay fans here at Rogers Center. It should be an exciting weekend with Tampa Bay coming into town. Tampa Bay, as Jamie mentioned earlier, has a 2 0 lead over the Yankees. Rowdy Telez swings and misses. It's 0 2 on the first baseman. Those are always entertaining games also when those two teams get together. There's a drive and this is going to be number 20 for Rowdy Tellez. He got to that fastball. Boy Rowdy shows you the type of talent that he has that he possesses. And if he can figure out that strike zone just a little bit better. If he can swing at a little bit more strikes and get that chase percentage down, he's going to be a force in the middle of that lineup for the Blue Jays. That's 20 home runs now. He's got about 400 plate appearances. Looked like an 0 2 pitch that was down and in, and he got to it. Looked like a slider. Here it comes down and in. Watch the follow through as he finishes his swing. And drills that thing out here. That's what you like to see from home run hitters that long finish. You extend through that baseball. Home run number 20. It becomes the fifth Blue Jay with 20 or more home runs as Teoscar strikes out. And that's a great sound. He squared it up. And it's number 20. He's been stuck on 19 for a while. 
Rowdy had a little pal hill early in the day taking ground balls with him. Emmett Cooper from Hamilton was here with Rowdy, and Emmett's five years old, and he said, hey, man, hit a home run for me tonight. How about that? There's Emmett out there. He was out with Rowdy loosening up. He <laughs> took some ground balls at first base, and he said, hey, Rowdy, hit me a home run tonight, and, man, did he deliver. How awesome is that to be able to do that for a small kid who will be watching. Get that 0 2 slider out of here. I tell you, Emmett was something else. He was a terrific baseball guy. He knew all about the team. He was getting autographs from all the players. And he asked me, he says, Hey, Buck, you want one of my baseball cards? And, and he, he, gave me, he, gave he autographed me it, didn't he? He autographed it. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Way to go, Rowdy. Brandon Jury behind one and two and hits it off the end of the bat. Davis at first will feed the pitcher covering. And Drury is retired two away. So the home run has plagued the Orioles all season long. Billy McKinney hit a home run to start the game for the Blue Jays, and Mounty Telez has added another home run. Mentioned the home runs that he know has given up. That's 29 of them now. 17 to left-handed batters. And he just couldn't get that slider to break enough to get it under the bat. Derek Fisher was called down on strikes, his only time up. Ball on the strike now on the Blue Jays left fielder. Derek made a heck of a play in the outfield in last night's game, crashing into the fence in front of the Blue Jays bullpen, caught the ball, but it popped out of his glove when he hit the warning track. And he talked to the umpire, Dan Iasonia, about it. And Iasonia said, Man, you had to get your hand close to your glove as if you were taking the ball out. And then we could have called it a catch. But he never got his hand near his glove and the ball popped free. Yeah, it was never secure in the glove. And when he rolled over, the ball rolled out. Two balls and two strikes. Base hit up the middle. Fisher hits a line drive past VR, who was shaded up the middle. He thought he had him struck out on the previous pitch on a fastball. That time he loops a curveball in there, and Derek bangs it back through the middle. A two out single for Fisher. Then bring up Luke Maley, the catcher. Haley's hitting in the ninth spot. First pitch breaking ball. Luke started against the Yankees on Saturday. He got two at bats and struck out both times. He hadn't had a chance to play an awful lot since coming off the injured list. He injured his oblique way back in July. That's a lot of time. Yeah, just working out here at Rogers Center before a ball game. I asked him before that first game, I said, how are you hitting? He goes, I'm not worried about my hitting. I'm worried about my catching. I, I don't know if I'll be able to catch the ball because it, it had been so long before since he had been behind the plate. He did a good job in New York. Fouls this one off. Boy, it is so tough. When you miss significant time and then you're coming back trying to play catch up in the big leagues without any rehab starts without any opportunities to get any at bats. And that was the case for Luke Maley. Outside. 
I went through something like that in 1970. I was drafted in the Army. I went to basic training. I'd missed the whole season. The general manager wanted me to go to San Jose and finish up the season and play there. And I said, oh, no, I've been playing in the Army. I'll be fine. Worst decision I ever made. Went to the big leagues and was totally overmatched. Bailey strikes out that ends the inning. Rowdy Thales with a solo home run. It's 2 0 Blue Jays. Time now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Joe Siddle in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Are all lit up right now. That's a great shot. Two nothing Blue Jays and Jacob Waggis back has done a nice job. No runs on three hits to this point. Got a couple of double plays early in the game. He has struck out three so far. And now he's working with the number six hitter, Hanser Alberto, and DJ Stewart and Chris Davis. Alberto's put together a nice season. 307 average. Pulled that one back. Alberto he is a heads up player. Well, he took a peek down at third base and saw Brandon Drury was a little bit deep and thought he had a chance to bunt for a base hit, but the pitch was upstairs. Taken all the way on that one. Watch him. Let me take a quick look. Boom. There he is at third base. Maybe I can drop one down. That's how you end up hitting. Sixth in the American League this year. Swinging a drive deep to left field, but Fisher has got plenty of room in front of the fence and makes the catch. Alberto gave it a ride. Ball's just a bit short. Maybe that goes out in Baltimore. Baltimore is not that deep down the left field line, but here it's just a long fly ball. I tell you what, it goes out Monday night. <laughs> oh here oh boy the ball was flying wasn't ten home it? runs in that game and the ball was absolutely jumping early in the game and it was appropriate that a walk off home run was hitting the 15th inning high strike as E.J. Stewart took the first pitch he struck out his first time up. Good changeup. Bagsback has thrown some good changeups so far in this game. We had mentioned a tough stretch of starts that Jacob had to go through. Five starts against Atlanta, Atlanta, Tampa Bay, New York, and New York. That's a tough schedule. For a young guy who is just feeling his way through the big lace, that last start against New York, he was very aggressive. Used his fastball 60%. Of the time. He also used his cutter another 21% of the time. So that cutter is basically a fastball. So he used a lot of fastballs, a lot of pitches to stay inside and hit the corners against the Yankees. It's the best pitch in baseball, the fastball. And when pitchers learn how to command the fastball, that's when they have the most success. And you'll hear pitchers talk about it after good outings. Boy, I was really hitting my spots. Well, <laughs> what do you hit your spots with? With your fastball. I don't think pitchers pitch enough in the minor leagues now to learn how to command their pitches. Everybody is so concerned about pitch count, innings limits, and all that. They never get a chance to go out and pitch and command the strike zone. Pitching is all about command, and that's why we had 200 pitchers pitching in games last night. 200 pitchers in 15 major league in games. 15, what is that, 13 or so? 13.3 pitchers per game, per both game. sides. That's terrible. Where do you learn some of your best as a pitcher late in a game when, when you're, tired? you're tired? Yeah, when you're tired and you don't have your best stuff, you learn how to pitch because yeah. you can't blow it by him. Now, and Pete's done a heck of a job with his pitching staff. He has had so many different pitchers to deal with. He's had to learn guys on the fly. He's dealt with a lot of rookies, and he has really done a great job getting the best he can out of this staff. But I think it's an industry wide situation where everybody's so concerned about pitch counts velocity innings limits and all of that kids never learn how to pitch. The Yankee Tampa Bay game yesterday there were 20 pitchers in that game now it went 12 innings 20 pitchers 
30 strikeouts. There was three runs scored, all on solo homers. Home runs. Three solo home runs. Arizona has completed their win over the Cardinals tonight, 9 7. As Davis pulls it foul, it's 0 and 2. I think there were 25 pitchers that pitched in that 19 inning game last night, and you can understand that. Mm -hmm. In the 15 inning game here on Monday night, there were 20 pitchers. Wag is back ahead 0 and 2. Chris Davis flying out to left field is only time up. Inside for a ball. Paul Fry, the lefty, loosening up. The starter, Gabriel Enoa. Enoa has thrown 83 pitches. In four innings. Nice pick by Mailey. Got to do it right here. He had Stewart 0 and 2 and then lost him through four wide ones and walked him. He's 0 and 2 on Chris Davis and he's thrown two balls in a row. And it got to finish him off on this at bat right here. Two and two. Maybe a backdoor cutter, something like that. Stay away from Chris's power. Much better at low ball hitter than a high ball hitter. And fouls that one off Bailey's catcher's mitt. 91 miles an hour and fouled it back. Waggis Pack is not going to light up the radar gun, so he really has to focus on hitting his spots and mixing all his pitches in. It's called pitching. And you know what? Guys can pitch. I mean, we have seen it for years. Mark Wistrata did a terrific job for the Blue Jays in his time here. Rarely threw a ball over 90 miles an hour. 2 2. Let's hit down the left side. It's going to be a long run for Fisher, and he's not going to get there in time. Waggis back has thrown just 64 pitches so far. Jacob didn't want the fastball. He's going to go with the breaking ball. Threw it in the dirt. Bailey with a pretty heads up play. That ball in the dirt. And generally, a base runner is going to take an extra step or two, thinking it might get away from the catcher. And Luke came up firing the first. Yeah, or they're going to throw the ball out of play because it went into the dirt. It's in the dirt. Luke picks it up and fires it down there. Jacob's thrown two ground balls. Tonight, and both of them have resulted into a double play. Would love to get number three here. Called strike three. Davis couldn't pull the trigger. Fourth strikeout for Wagersback. Second Oriole that's been called out on strikes. Backdoor cutter. Chris Davis gives up on it and it is another strikeout for Waggis Pack. That was good execu execution of that fastball cutter. Number nine hitter is the catcher Austin wins. He's single already tonight. He had a single to left field. He was stranded in the third. One of two base runners the Orioles have stranded so far tonight. Both of them in the third. Inside. Hazel May in her earlier report about Jacob Wagespack pitching late in September talked about Wagespack physically feels fine, but mentally just the grind of having prepare so late in the season when it's your first time pitching in September is a challenge. And then too, we mentioned the teams he's had to pitch against. That'll wear you down yeah. <laughs> mentally. That'll grind you to the bone. 
But hey, that's what the big leagues is all about. Absolutely, it makes you better. And the good ones who play on good teams end up pitching another month after that into the playoffs. Seven months of baseball. This is in the air. Second baseman Kevin Bizio backpedaling into the outfield. He makes the catch in Wagaspat. Five good innings in the book. The Orioles have stranded three, and the Blue Jays have a two nothing lead. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. Log on to BlueJays.com to get your tickets. Lots of kids here tonight, and they're all fired up about Blue Jays having the lead. And some of them have their baseball cards, some of them have their gloves, and they're all set for a foul ball. New pitcher into the ball game is the lefty Paul Fry taking over for you know got three lefties down in that bullpen Fry has pitched a lot against the Blue Jays this season this is his 11th game against the Blue Jays he's only thrown eight and a third innings but he's given up seven earned runs he has a couple of saves against the Jays this season basically fastball slider is what you're going to get from him. Billy McKinney off to a good start tonight. He homered in his first at bat, walked in the third inning. Breaking ball off the plate outside. He mentioned Fry has two saves in three opportunities. There are five different Orioles that have saves against the Blue Jays this season. They just don't have that number one guy that they can go to. Boy, that was a tricky hop. Davis stayed with it, and he feeds Fry covering. Chris Davis can play first base. He's a big guy. He's got good hands, good range. He's got a terrific arm, and that was a tricky hop he stayed with. He played it correctly. He got it on the side. That's what you want to do. When you play the corner position, third base, first base, you got these balls coming at you. See how he turns his body to his side, to his glove side? That ball took a tricky hop, but because he was in an athletic position to field it, that leaves the arm loose enough to move around to take those bad hops. He picks it. Look at that turn and then react to the bad hop. That was a perfect example of how you take a ground ball and play it into a good hop. He did a nice job on that ball. So one out of here is Bravic Valera, the shortstop. He's 0 for 2 so far. He's batting right handed. He's a switch hitter. First two at bats came as a lefty. Blair picked up his first hit as a Blue Jay, first RBI in the sixth inning, and an RBI single. That was last night. Goes after that high pitch, it's two and two. First in the duty, they just they need a shortstop. Machette goes down, Urania's gone down. Valera's going to get his chances at shortstop. It's going to be interesting to see how clubs handle it next year when they're limited to 28 players in September. 26 during the regular season. Then you get to September, you can expand it by two more. But you won't be able to have your 40 man roster up in the big leagues at the end of the season. You've made an adjustment with that, and I agree with it 100%. Which is fair, right? You can't play the game of baseball for five months one way and then change it all the last month of the season when some of the most important baseball is being played. Now, you can bring a taxi squad, can't you? But you can only have two. Extra players right. Two in active. September. Yep. That's pulled foul. Is that a daily thing or is that a series thing? I, I'm not sure if all I'm not the sure rules how they're just work yet. That out. Yep. And there are a couple of things that have been on the table, and also the fact that pitchers will have to face three batters next year. I think that's in place as well. Bouncing ball up the middle, backhanded by Alberto. First base, two outs. 
Alberto's had a good year at second base. He's made 10 errors, but he's played different position. Only three of them have been at second base. That's a 990 fielding percentage. And if he had enough starts at second base, he would tie for the lead in the American League for fielding percentage at 990. But he's had starts at third and left and right. Second base, obviously. He's also pitched an inning this season for the Orioles. He's had a terrific season, his best by far in his big league career. Kevin Biggio is 0 for 1. Biggio walked in the third to extend his streak to 26 games reaching base. All of these rookies playing late in September, minor league seasons, they end on Labor Day. And then you might play in a postseason series, maybe an extra week, maybe 10 days, but that's about it. So they're all playing much deeper into a season than they've ever played before. Cavins playing in his 97th game. There is just so much more prep work, if you will, at the major league level than there is at the minor league level. Video to watch, scouting reports to go over. You know, when you go into a major league clubhouse in this day and age, it looks like a college study hall. It really does. There are monitors set up all over the place. Everybody's looking at charts. Everybody's looking at graphics. They've got pads out there looking at tablets, looking at video. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. I started playing in 67, and obviously there was no video, but Charlie Lau, the hitting coach in Kansas City, brought out a video recorder in about 1973, I believe. And he had it on a hand cart and took it out to the batting cage. And it was a big yellow monstrosity and it was videotape. Mm -hmm. So he set up the camera and he would tape guys hitting. But he wouldn't even let us watch it. He watched it for his information. He said, I don't want you guys looking at this stuff. <laughs> he said, I'm going to look at it and try to make some adjustments, but I don't want you guys looking at it. That was in the early 70s. Could you imagine doing that today? Hey, I'm going to look at it. I don't want you. Now, that was uh, before VHS tape, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was, that was way before VHS. Yeah, it was a reel to reel tape and a can camera. That's why it was so big. And he carried it out on his hand card, a big yellow monstrosity. I can still see it. And he'd take it down to the batting cage. And Freddy Pontek, Hal McCray, George Brett, Al Collins, we all hit. And Charlie would look at the video. But we never got to see it very often. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he did that for the All-Star game that year, didn't he? 1973. That's the it really interesting. He hired a cameraman, and it was Phil. He hired a 16-millimeter cameraman to shoot color high speed video of the 73 all star game and I would love to see that video because the cameraman would go back and forth from dugout to dugout according to right handed hitter left handed hitter to watch their swing from the side and I think there were mm -hmm. seven home runs hit in the game and there was like 10 Hall of Famers in that game but it was really interesting because all the home runs were hit and all of the hitters were in the same position when they started their swing. It was really interesting because I think, uh, you know, my memory, like I think Yaz was in the game. I think Bobby Bonds was in the mm -hmm. game. Bobby Tolan, Yaz, they all had different stances. But when that front foot hit, their hands were in a circle right over their back shoulder. And that's Everyone. where he got the term the launch position, launch position for his book. Yep. Yeah, it was a pretty interesting time. That he hits a rolling ball foul outside of third. All hitters, all good hitters, have to do certain things to get their body in position to swing the bat. Now, some guys are bigger, some guys are smaller, taller, shorter, quicker, stronger, the whole thing. But everybody's got to get the bat in a level position at about a 45 degree angle off their back shoulder to get ready to swing it. And you have to have your weight back. You just have to figure out how to get to that position. What is ever the most comfortable position you can feel to get into that position to be ready to swing the bat. Ready. Checks his swing and it's now two balls and two strikes. 
Yeah, I can remember when the process began with George Brett, and George was not a great hitter in the minor leagues. And I mean, Charlie Lau had to break him down. He hit like Carl Yastrzemski. Yeah, he had the hands way up there, didn't he? Yeah, because George grew up with the Boston Red Sox. His brother Cameron, Kemmer, was playing with the Red Sox when Yaz was a star. Mm -hmm. 67, Kemmer played in the World Series. And he was around Yaz, so he saw that and he thought that was the way he should hit. I have a baseball card of George's his rookie year where his hands were way up there like that. And I'm like, well, that's not how he hit. He hit with the bat right off his shoulder with his weight back and level swing. I was there through the whole transition and it was quite a battle. But Charlie Lau got him to flatten out his swing. Outside, it's a full count. Good job by Guerrero. Laying off some borderline pitches now with two outs. Vigio at first will be moving. Rowdy Telez homered in the fourth his last time up. He's on deck if Guerrero can keep the inning alive. Look out, Louis. Louis Rivera, the third base coach, on his toes. You can see that he's smiling at him and he said, hey, hit it out there in fair territory. I don't have a glove down here. So Louis backed up a few steps. Yeah, I think that third base <laughs> coaching box is too close to home plate. The way these young hitters hit the ball nowadays, too close. You got to move it down the line a little bit. But the coaches will tell you they have to be close to get an angle when they're coaching a base runner from second. This time Biggio takes his lead from first. Ground ball. Big hop for VR. That ends the inning. Paul Fryer walks the batter, strands a runner. We'll go to the sixth. The Blue Jays have a 2 0 lead. Also, Jacob Wag is back. A very good start to this ballgame. No runs on three hits. He's walked two and struck out four, thrown 69 pitches. And this is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Blue Jays. The Jays had surrendered back to back double digit runs in the last two games. First time they have done that this season. And because of that, they've used a lot of pitchers. Yeah, hopefully they can get two more, squeeze two more innings out of him. It's going to be tough. You got VR Hayes and Mancini. There's a base hit just off the glove of Biggio, a leadoff single for VR. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Alonzo just one off the all time rookie home run record hit by Aaron Judge in 2017. Judge hit 52 home runs, and now Alonzo's just one behind. What a year he's had. He's been a terrific player. I'm not talking about just 50 home runs. He won the home run hitting contest, probably going to be the rookie of the year in the National League. He's basically lifted that organization close to the playoffs. Yeah, they're going to fall a bit short, but Alonzo came into this game. He's got 70 walks as well. He's the only rookie that has more walks than Kevin Biggio. But the big difference coming into this game, Alonzo had 672 plate appearances. Kevin, 413. And now Kevin has walked twice more tonight, so he's got 70 walks. Jason Adam starting to loosen up. Adam did not pitch in the game last night. VR looks like he wants to run. There he goes. Pitch inside and Maley doesn't make a throw. Came out of the shoot and just didn't have a good grip on the baseball. Yeah. So that'll be stolen base number 39 for VR. Yeah, it just didn't look like Luke had a good grip on that ball. So instead of trying to Make a play where none was there. He decides to just hold it on to it. Well, VR is third in the American League behind Malik Smith and 
Mondesi in Kansas City. And Alberto Mondesi has 43 stolen bases. There's a drive in the center, and Hernandez makes a nice running catch. One out. Let's go back to Jamie Campbell. Well, what a season the Twins offense has had, and they made some great acquisitions in the offseason, including signing Nelson Cruz. Yeah, who at, uh, is he pushing 40? Hit his 400th career home run earlier this month. Trey Mancini is 0 for 2 so far. Aaron Brooks, the right-hander, loosening up for Baltimore. Wouldn't expect Fry would go long. He pitched an inning, gave up a walk, and nothing more. He pitched the fifth inning. There's a drive in the center. This is going to hang up for Hernandez. He makes the catch. Mancini is over three. Keep him in the yard. The Orioles have homered in 18 consecutive games. These are the home run hitters coming up Mancini. Smith. Jacob's done a good job. Mentioned Waggis back pitched seven innings on the. 22nd of August. Trying to finish off the sixth here. And do it against the cleanup hitter, Dwight Smith Jr., who has walked and popped out. Well, he jammed him with that good pitch on the first pitch. I love his cutter. When he throws it where he needs to, that time was right in on the hands, and Smith couldn't extend to the baseball. Just jammed him up. It's got late breaking action on it. It looks like his four seam fastball coming in there. And then there's a little bit of a break. Got that one right in on his hands. Change up for strike two. The Orioles look a little bit puzzled by what they have seen from Waggis pack so far in this game. They've managed just four hits. After getting 15 last night proof that you can look at all the video you want. This is the first time that the Orioles are facing Waggis pack. First time they are seeing him. Standing in that batter's box. I'm sure they've looked at a lot of film a little bit different when you're standing up there. Breaking ball bounce way out in front of home plate. Jacobs making his 13th start of the season. If he can get through six it'll be the fourth time he's pitched six or more innings in a stunt. And like we said before, he couldn't come at a better time. His pitch count is in good shape. Boy, it sure is. He gets through this part of the order and retires the cleanup hitter. Running back out there for another inning. One and two to Smith. Gets up. What a job by Jacob Wagner's back. He strikes out the cleanup hitter. That's his fifth strikeout of the game. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Rowdy Teles will lead things off. He hit home run number 20 his last time. Home run of the season back in the fourth inning his last time up. And you take a look at the rookie home runs in franchise history. Eric Hinsky had 24 home runs in 2002. He was the rookie of the year that year. J.P. and C.B. with 23. Rowdy Teles and Fred McGriff. And they've got a connection as well. Rowdy Teles gets a chance to work with Fred McGriff down in Florida from time to time a couple of power hitters talking long balls now he has tied McGriff's rookie home run total. Yeah, the game yesterday where he had. Hit the ball all over the place hit a ball to center field pulled a ball for a hit. He is up to his walk rate also he's walked seven times in his last five games that he has played in. 
shift is in place for Tellez. 1 1 pitch. Breaking ball down for a ball. Rowdy's 19th home run came on the 11th of September against Boston's Trevor Kelly. So he's been sitting on 19 for a while. Well, we got a hanger and fouls it into the second deck. Just a little tardy on that one. He's been looking at films of some of the good hitters from around baseball, some of the Houston Astro hitters and some of the other good hitters around baseball to try and find out what they're doing. And in every one of them noticed how short their swings are and how they were able to get to the pitch out in front. It'll help them to wait just a little bit longer. This has got a chance to the left. It's going to go. Home run number 21. He doesn't have to pull it to hit it out. No. That's for sure. And that's the thing. I'm telling you, he's got a great swing. And he's got that sheer strength that he can muscle the ball out of any part of the ballpark. I think once he understands the strike zone a little bit better, and they've been trying to get that chase rate down, he understands the strike zone a little bit better, brings that pitcher back into the strike zone. He's going to hit a lot of home runs for the Blue Jays. That was effortless, that swing, and he hit it a long way to the opposite field. Uh, you made a great, great point about being short. Uh, he is very short to this ball. He hits an opposite field, the home run, a multi home run game for Rowdy Telez. Paul Fry is out of the game. I've had a run game from one of their hitters. It's a breaking ball, and he goes the other way with yeah, it. Look how he stays on that ball. And did you see how level the bat came through the strike zone and then finished the swing? Driving that ball the other way. That gives the Blue Jays a three to nothing lead. Aaron Brooks, his numbers with the A's and the Orioles in 28 games, an ERA over five. He was claimed off waivers from the Oakland A's in July. He actually came in a game five days ago, entered the game in relief, and threw seven very good innings for the Baltimore Orioles, but he hasn't had a lot of luck against the Blue Jays. In his career, he's faced them twice this year alone, 10 innings, and he's given up eight runs to the Jays. This is popped up in playable foul territory. Chris Davis, the first baseman, makes the grab. And go back and take another look at Rowdy's home run. This is the sixth home run he has hit against a left handed pitcher, and he just muscles it out of here. Watch the level swing, drives that thing. And it takes off slicing it down the left field line with room to spare. I'm confused. You've said it a couple of times now. A level swing <laughs> and he hit a home run. What a concept. I, I'm, I'm looking at the swing at con at the contact point and where it came from and then where he finished. And and he went through the baseball instead of up and underneath it. Yeah, he really got on top of it and drove it out of the ballpark. A terrific swing by Telez. As we mentioned, it's the 24th time the Blue Jays hitters have had a multi-home run game this season. Billy McKinney was the last, of course, to do that on Sunday in New York. He had a two-run home run and a solo shot. Rowdy has two solo home runs tonight. Brandon Jury cues went off the end of the bat. Jury had a two homer game on the 27th of July against Tampa Bay. He had two solo home runs against the Rays. Breaking ball foul up. Aaron will throw you the fastball, the slider, the change up, an occasional curve ball. He has made starts in his career. He has also come out of the bullpen. He's pitched against the Jays four times in his career. That running fastball comes back and catches the outside corner. Two up, two down for Brooks here in the sixth. Brooks against the Jays has pitched a total of 12 in the third innings. He's given up 22 hits and 23 earned runs. Three homers and 10 walks in those 12 in the third. 
Blue Jays have faced him when he pitched for Kansas City. They faced him when he pitched for the A's. 2014, that's when they first faced him. Then once in 15, then a couple of times this year when he was a member of the Oakland A's. Derek Fisher, the batter. The fly virtual strike zone is brought to you by Rogers at Night Wi Fi Hub, the power to control your Wi Fi connected devices. Derek Fisher singled up the middle his last time up, just to the left of Jonathan VR. There's another strike. A change of missed away two and two now. Rowdy Tellez, home runs number 20 and 21. Everett, is that his name? His little buddy? He's Everett be, Cooper. He's got Hamilton. Be, gotta be pretty excited for Absolutely. Rowdy. Absolutely. He was out with Rowdy before the game, taking ground balls. Rowdy. Had him on the field. The two had met when Rowdy was playing in Buffalo. Emmett Cooper is from Hamilton. And here he is before the game with Rowdy stretching. <laughs> he went over to first base, took some ground balls with him. And before the game started, Emmett said, Hey, Rowdy, hit a home run tonight. And he did one better. He hit two. It's a fly ball to left field. Smith going back in the corner and makes the catch right up against the fence. But Rowdy Telez had a big night tonight. The Blue Jays have a 3 0 lead. He homered in the fourth, a leadoff home run. Does it again in the sixth. Numbers 20 and 21 for Rowdy. He is looking to even his record at 5 and 5. He is in line for the win. His longest outing since August 22nd at Los Angeles. Yes, bullpen has to hold him now with the three run lead as we head into the seventh inning. First one out of that bullpen tonight for the Blue Jays. Jason Adam will take over. Adam's done a very nice job for the Jays in his 20 games. A very respectable 332 earned run average. Opponents hitting just 200 against Jason. We've seen a lot of good sharp breaking balls, fastball breaking ball type of pitcher. Rio Ruiz, the third baseman, will be the first up here in the seventh. Blue Jays have a 3 0 lead. There's that breaking ball and misses for ball one. Adam making his 21st appearance. And 16 of his 20 appearances have been scoreless. Good fastball gets it by Ruiz. Adam earned a win on the 10th of August against the Yankees, his first career win. I think he had a chance to make a major contribution to this team if he didn't get hurt right when he went down to Buffalo to start the season. Had one of those lat injuries and he missed about three three months or so with that lat problem. And then he had a little bit of an elbow issue for about three or four days. This month. Where they had to shut him down and just not pitch him said he went out and threw a, a side session and deemed himself healthy again and came back 16 of those 20 appearances have been scoreless for Jason ground ball it's going to be a tough play Valera can't make it they were playing in the shift and the shortstop came over from second base and just couldn't come up with it cleanly it'll be an infield hit for Ruiz Vizio the second baseman was deep into the outfield you see where he starts and 
Valera is up the middle. And he just taps this ball on the carpet. So here come both of the infielders. Valera calls him off and can't handle it. Normally very sure handed. Close the glove a little bit too soon. So the leadoff man's aboard here in the seventh. Hanser Alberto is over two. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Adam is 27 years old. He's 28. He turned 28 on the August 4th. He's from Overland Park, Kansas, outside of Kansas City. Alberto behind 0 and 2. Alberto is a free swinger, but he didn't strike out much. He struck out just 49 times this season. That's in 538 plate appearances coming into this game. That's one every almost 11 plate appearances. That's the best in the major leagues. Now he can really cover the entire strike zone and balls off the plate. He's hitting over 300 since the All Star break. He had a five hit game that was at Kansas City. Back on August the 30th, he's just put together a career type of season. It's the first chance he's had to play every day. Of course, the Blue Jay fans, you'll remember he played against the Blue Jays in the ALDS in 2015 and a couple of RBIs. When he was a member of the Texas Rangers, he was just a utility type of infielder with that team. He played against the Blue Jays in that series because the third baseman Adrian Beltre injured himself running up the first baseline. So Alberto got a chance to play in a few of the games. And he had a couple of RBIs in that 14 inning game. I think he drove in the two runs that won it. Now Brito in the 14th inning broke a 4 4 tie. Got that hit off of Troy Hawkins. And here he strikes out number 50. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Boy, the Indians have had their problems playing against the White Sox. That's probably going to end up costing them for sure the division and maybe the postseason. They haven't played well against Chicago. They're eight and nine against the White Sox this season. And that's the difference between Minnesota. Minnesota has played very well against Chicago. Cleveland hasn't. A losing record to the White Sox. Minnesota has a 5 1 lead over Detroit. And as we mentioned and just heard from Jamie Campbell, Chicago 3 1 over the Indians. They're in the bottom of the third. Still plenty of time for Cleveland to come back. Four one now. Four to one in the third. And they have had their hitting shoes on last night, the Indians. So they're capable of coming back. Had a little bit of a boost when Jose Ramirez came back About yesterday. That. Huh? Jose Ramirez came back, hit two home runs, including a grand slam, had a career high seven RBIs. About a month after having that hamate surgery. If you're not familiar with hamate, it's a, a bone in the basically in the palm of your hand, and there's a hook on the end of it, and it's quite common among hitters. Because they have that knob at the end of the bat sits right on that bone, and when they take a swing, 
it's happened a lot. I mean, you go back to Don Baylor and Jose Canseco, and a lot of the great hitters have had that bone taken out. You crack it, and the only way to get rid of it is to surgically remove it. Two two pitch. Cut on and miss. Another strikeout for Adam. Mentioned Ramirez came back. Joey Gallo of the Texas Rangers had the same surgery in July, and he hasn't made it back yet. So everybody is different, of course, but boy, that was a big boost for the Indians to get Ramirez back. Just a, a mental boost. And he played, he, he hit two home runs, drove in a career high seven runs, did not finish the game. They took him out for precautionary reasons. Chris Davis facing Jason Adam with two out, a couple of strikeouts. Alberto and Stewart both struck out after the infield single by Ruiz. Davis hit his 250th career home run as an Oriole versus the Jays back in August. He became the fastest player in team history to hit that mark. He did it in 1110 games. I tell you, this guy was a major slugger. Well, when you think about the Orioles franchise to be the fastest 250 with the greats like Eddie Murray, Cal Ripken, so many great players have come through there. Boog Powell, of course, started his career. Frank Robinson Frank came Robin. over after he established himself in the National League. But that's as an Oriole. Yeah. 250 home runs as an Oriole, the fastest in their history. Chris Davis came from the Texas Rangers, and this time he takes ball four. So that'll push Ruiz down to second, and that'll bring the tying run to the plate. That's the third walk the Blue Jays have issued. Jacob Waggis back walked two in six innings. And now Adam walks Davis with two outs. It's the confidence we get when we come together for our team. TD, proud fan and official bank of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful evening here in Toronto. Blue Jays will have tomorrow off before they open up their final series of the season on Friday night against Tampa Bay. Tyler Glasnow will start. Glasnow is throwing the ball very well since coming back from an early season injury. Austin wins the catcher is one for two. Wins hit a home run last night in the fourth inning. His first home run of the season. Wins is catching for just the 18th time this season. Two on, two outs. First pitch breaking ball is outside. Adam was the winning pitcher here on Monday night. He pitched the 15th inning through 14 pitches and retired to side in order and that set up the Blue Jays for that walk off win in the bottom of the 15th. Not as sharp tonight in his inning. Yeah, he's had a couple of K's. He's also had an infield hit and a walk. He's thrown 22 pitches to get those two outs. He'd walk on the phone to Matt Bushman and they'll get somebody else loose now as they're scrambling down in that bullpen. Three and oh. Jordan Romano starting to loosen up. Got to come all the way back. Number nine hitter. Come back and get him. 
There's a strike. Romano pitched the 11th inning on Monday night. Had a couple of strikeouts, gave up a single and nothing more. Yeah, you don't want to face Jonathan VR in this inning. As the go ahead run. He's hitting ninth. You got to challenge him. 3 1 pitch. Line drive to center, right to Hernandez. That ball was knuckling. He hit it square on the button. A knuckleball to center. But Adam gets out of it. The Orioles strand a pair. It'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Sportsnet. Biggest names, the biggest games. Every night, it all happens on Sportsnet. Catch all the action when the puck drops on October the 2nd. Luke Maley, the number nine hitter, goes after the first pitch, and it's a high fly ball into center. Austin Hayes coming in. Let's check in again with Jamie Kemble. Charlie Morton might be one of the best offseason signs in all of baseball. He signed a two year contract for thirty million dollars and everybody said oh Charlie Morton what's he going to do down there. Well Charlie Morton is looking for his 16th win of the season tonight against the Yankees six innings one hit three walks nine strikeouts. He's got a three oh five earned run average. The question becomes why does Houston let him go. Yeah. Why doesn't Houston try and resign him. Houston's got two free agents that are going to be gone at the end of this season. Garrett Cole's going to be gone. Wade Miley as well. Charlie Martin, what a pitcher he has mm -hmm. been the last several years. He's turned his career around late in his career. And Billy McKinney he takes that running fastball on the corner for a strike. Well, the Rays will be here Friday night. Three game series. Blue Jays and Rays always an entertaining affair. It's a change up the McKinney fouls on. Yes it is and I'm sure we'll talk about that come Friday those back to back games that uh, the Jays had against the Rays back in July. Both teams coming back from seven eight run deficits to win games on back to back days. Incredible. Aaron Brooks in his second inning of relief misses with that fastball downstairs. Three balls and two strikes. Ball four. McKinney walks for a second time. He's been on base three times. Now a message from Expedia. From the cities to the mountains, rivers, and lakes, get the best out of Canada with Expedia. Aaron Brooks with a one-out walk, and now he'll face the shortstop, Rebic Valera. Tanner Scott loosening up. Scott pitched the eighth inning and retired the side in order. And there it takes the first pitch strike. The shortstop is 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs and a fly ball out. Ground ball. This could be 2. Alberto it's UVR back to first. A double play and the inning is over just like that. They'll go to the eighth inning. The Blue Jays have a three nothing lead. Jordan Romano coming out of the bolt is presented by a baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Maple Leaf season just around the corner and that Maple Leaf fan has a souvenir to remind him of the baseball season this year. Three nothing. 
Blue Jays and all three runs have come on home runs three solo home runs one by Billy McKinney and two by Rowdy Tellez. New pitcher into the game is Jordan Romano. What a nice pleasant surprise for the Blue Jays this year from Romano. Remember they lost him in the rule five draft. Eventually went over to Texas and then was claimed back after he did not make the team went down to the minor leagues they transitioned him into the bullpen and it's been great for him. Came up here throwing about 97 or 98 miles an hour suffered a little bit of a setback when he went down to the minor leagues and he's starting to regain that form again. A little bit of an injury of an oblique injury and just hasn't been able to turn it loose but the last couple of outings we've seen a little more conviction in his delivery. There's a good fastball at 93. Ball on a strike on the leadoff man Jonathan VR VR is two for three. He had a tough night last night. He was one for six in that game with four strikeouts. Another good fastball right on the outside corner. That's the thing about Jordan. He's not afraid to show you that fastball. I think he's a, a good looking young pitcher who coming out of the pen throwing strikes with the heater he can go upstairs if he needs to a little bit of a breaking ball also. He's got that mentality of a reliever too doesn't he. Missed with that breaking ball downstairs. Coming out of the bullpen you want to throw strikes throw as few pitches as possible get quick resolutions in the at bats and don't let the hitters know what you're featuring on a given night. Two balls and two strikes. Jonathan VR is an everyday player. Literally. Fouls this one back in our direction. VR has played 159 games, every one of the games for the Orioles. Whit Merrifield, Jorge Soler of the Royals have also played in every game. Marcus Simeon and Stalin Castro. A couple of infielders, Simeon with the A's, Castro with the Marlins. They played in every game their team has played. Boy, look at that fastball location right on the outside corner, and Romano strikes out the yard. Jordan threw that one right by him, threw three fastballs right by him on the outside corner. Even if he hits that one, he's not going to do anything with it. Austin Hayes singled his first time up. He is one for three. First pitch strike from Romano. Eighth inning. Blue Jays trying to win this series against Baltimore. Teams have split the first two games. And a good breaking ball down and away quickly 0 and 2. Yeah, no messing around. Go right after him. Don't show him too much. Don't show him what's in your arsenal. Just go right after him. He's the kind of guy you don't really need to set pitches up. It's fastball slider. Tried to throw that slider a little too hard and bounced it around on home plate. Good time to elevate a fastball now. A good breaking ball. He got a piece of it to stay alive. Hayes came up with the Orioles in 2017, got into some games, did not come up to the big leagues in 18, and he was actually home in the month of September, thinking he was getting ready for the Arizona Fall League, but they called him up, and he's done the most with it. 
He gets his second hit of the game, stays on that outside pitch and rips it to right field. It's a good looking player. He's got a multi hit game now. Plays good defense. I think they found their center fielder of the future. Well, it sure looks like it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. He had his first multi home run game on Monday. He stays on top of this high fastball. He's able to keep it in the ballpark by hitting a line drive to right field. So here's Trey Mancini. He's hitless in three at bats so far tonight, trying to extend his hit streak to 12 games. Hit into a double play, struck out, and lined down. He's driven in 17 runs during his 11 game hit streak. Inside. That has jumped his total in RBIs to 94. During that hit streak, four homers, six doubles, and those 17 RBIs, as you mentioned. Second longest hit streak of his career. He had a 17 gamer a couple of years ago. He is tied with Tim Anderson for the longest active hit streak in the majors. Another pitch inside. Richard Blyer. Another left hand looks like he's standing by ready to come into the game. A four pitch walk and that'll bring the tying run to the plate. Now Romano struck out the first man he faced then he gives up a single and now a walk. And Pete Walker's on the phone to the bullpen. Dwight Smith Jr. is hitting in the cleanup spot tonight. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Blue Jays have turned two double plays in this ballgame. They came in the first and second inning. Smith Jr. struck out his last time. Up. That was the last batter that Jacob Wagespack faced in this ballgame. Wagespack was terrific, as you see Wilmer Font beginning to warm up. He threw him a beautiful changeup to finish off that sixth inning. Mason Adam had a scoreless seventh inning. Romano trying to do the rest here in the eighth. That's fouled straight back. The Blue Jays pitchers have walked four in this ball game, and the walk here in the eighth has brought the tying run to the plate. One and two. Wang is back. Left after a terrific outing, he threw just 78 pitches. And the last man he retired was the cleanup batter. And that was the third time he had faced White Smith Jr. So he was working, looking at the possibility of coming back for the seventh. To the number five hitter, there's a base hit to right field. And they're going to stop Hayes at third. The bases are loaded with just one out. So the Orioles mounting a comeback here in the eighth. They got the dangerous hitter to lead off the inning, but then the two strike hit by Hayes. Mancini walked, and now the former Blue Jay gets a breaking ball out over the plate. Rips it into right field to load him up. And the go ahead run will come to the plate in Ruiz. Ruiz hit a home run in this series. And an infield hit last time up. Ruiz has got some power. He homered on Monday night, a two run shot. That was off Justin Schaefer, an opposite field home run, one of three home runs the Orioles hit in the fifth inning in that series opener on Monday night. Ruiz with 12 home runs.
First pitch breaking ball is pulled foul. Ruiz has also hit into a double play tonight after leadoff walk to Smith in the second. He grounded into a 6 5 3 double play. Pretty good numbers with the bases loaded. Although a little bit of a small sample size. Six for 15. Oh, and one. Little tapper rolled up the first baseline. Telez will go to bag and retire Ruiz. Hayes comes in to score. Warriors are on the board. It's now a 3 1 game. And Ruiz will pick up an RBI on the ground out. His 46th RBI, but now there are two outs. But yeah. you've got the dangers, Alberto, at the plate. Hanser Alberto is 0 for 3. And that ground out got a run in. It also got the tying runs in the scoring position. So the infield got to be on their toes on a ground ball. Got to keep the ball on the infield now. Two outs. Mancini's at third base. Point Smith Jr.'s at second. Just off the plate inside. Alberta did not play in the game last night. He was one for seven on Monday night. He and was he is 0 for tonight. He was in the lineup and then the Blue Jays made a change. That hit him. So Alberto will go to first. That would load the bases and now you've got a left handed hitter Charlie Montoya has popped out of the dugout. He's going to make a pitching change. So he's got Wilmer Font ready down in the bullpen. Romano strikes out the first batter of the inning then gives up a single a walk a single a ground out the first and he hits a batter bases are loaded two outs the Orioles threatening here in the eighth the fourth Blue Jay Pitt pitched in last night's game two innings he came in and pitched the fourth and the fifth gave up two home runs in the fourth inning one to Dwight Smith Jr. and one to Austin wins so the bases are loaded to run in D.J. Stewart the right field of the batter. There's pitches a ball outside. Stewart's got some power. He had a two run home run in last night's game. One of the first round draft picks. Spent some time in the minor leagues. A little September call up, and he's, he's done a good job for him. Two balls and no strikes. Ryan Dull with the Blue Jays for a second time did not pitch the first time before he was designated for assignment but he has been added to the roster today once again. Three and oh. He walks in a run. It's a one run game. Font walks DJ Stewart with the bases loaded and two outs. Mancini comes in to score. It's 3 2. It's been a problem all year long. Walks just have not been able to command the strike zone. But now the tying run is 90 feet away. And Chris Davis. Font threw 32 pitches in the game last night in two innings, and he's back in there now. Chris Davis takes the ball. Davis is the eighth Oriole to bat this inning. Luke Maley out to the mound. Got to help out his pitcher in this situation. There are two outs. 
Jordan Romano came in the game and struck out the first batter. He got a ground ball to first base. And then he hit Hanser Alberto. Funk coming out of the pen, walks the first man he faced, forces in a run. Davis has eight career grand slams, so you can't just lay it in there. Ball two. Playing him in the shift. Of course, Davis has terrific power. He had a home run in the 12th inning here on Monday night. There's a strike. And the crowd reacts accordingly. 13,385 in attendance here. Third and final game of this series against the Orioles. Fouled out. Anxious moments for the pitching coach. Chris Davis with a 2 2 count. Now the count is four. With two outs and the bases loaded, the runners will be moving on the pitch. White Smith Jr. at third base. He had a base hit. Andrew Alberto hit by a pitch at second, and White oh. Stewart, J.D. Stewart at first. 3 2 pitch. Fly ball to center. Hernandez is there waiting on it and makes the catch and Funk gets out of it. So the Blue Jays will take a 3 2 lead into the bottom of the eighth. Time now for a Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Joe Siddle in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Done. They lost their MVP candidate, Christian Yelich, with a broken kneecap, and they've only gotten better since he's been out. Congratulations to Milwaukee, great counselor and manager. New pitcher for the Orioles, Richard Blyer, making his 51st appearance. He'll come into the ball game and face Kevin Biggio, the left-handed batter. Kevin is batting in the third spot tonight. A couple of lefties scheduled to bat this inning. Now that they have gotten back into the game, they want the matchup lefty on the lefties. This is where Kevin gets tough. Working over those. Those pitchers to get on base. You see him asking the umpire right there if that was a strike. Evans had a good season against the Orioles. This is his 14th game against Baltimore. He has a double, a triple, six home runs, and 14 RBIs. Of course, he hit for the cycle against Baltimore at Oriole Park at Camden Yards the last time these two teams met. Kevin has walked twice tonight, so he extends his streak to 26 games in a row, reaching base. Takes one right down the middle for a strike two. CB Wilkerson available on the bench. He did not start. He's a switch hitter. Way outside. The Orioles have a potent bench. They need to go to the bench. Davey Wilkerson and Anthony Santander both switch hitters available off the bench. They get Ken Giles. Giles is warming up for the Blue Jays. It's a save situation right now. Somebody's going to hit for the number nine hitter Austin wins the catcher. A ball and two strikes. As you stays alive. Giles this season has a save and one save opportunity against Baltimore. He's pitched in four games prior to this one tonight against the Orioles. Another one two pitch. Yeah. He lays off.
Blyer is 32 years old. He has pitched with the Yankees and the Orioles, and here he strikes out Kevin with a fastball on the outside corner. He's not going to light up the radar gun, but he's been pitching now this season at the back ends of the bullpen. He's done a good job for him. Crossed up Biggio with that fastball on the outside corner to get the first out. One away, Vladdy Guerrero, the DH tonight's 0 for 3. Ball on a strike to Guerrero. Glad he came into this ball game with 27 hits against the Orioles, the most by any hitter this season. Guerrero thought that was low, and he expresses that to Hunter Wendelstadt, veteran umpire. His hunter's dad was a terrific National League umpire for a number of years. The late Harry Wendelstadt. Guerrero goes after it and strikes up. Time now for Drive of the Game. Brought to you by Honda. Driving Canada home for 50 years. Oh, we love this so much. We're going to do it twice. Thanks to Rowdy Telez. Gets that breaking ball inside. And pulls it out of the ballpark for his 20th home run of the season. And to top that against the left hander, inside outs, that ball drives it the other way. This one down the left field line for his 21st. Tonight's drives of the game brought to you by Rowdy Telez. Now has a chance for a three homer game. Telez is the first rookie in franchise history to have three multi home run games in a single season. Home run up to 21 now with a pair tonight. He homered off of Paul Fry in the sixth inning, his sixth home run against the lefty pitcher. And again, he's got two strikes. Both of his home runs tonight have come with two strikes. That Ball way outside. The Blue Jays haven't had a hitter hit three home runs in a game since Kendrys Morales, August 3rd, 2017, at Baltimore. They got Castro loosening up for the O's. Three homers in a game. That, that is something else. Two homers in a game is something else. Three. Crazy. Four. I was here when Carlos Delgado hit his four home run in one game against Tampa Bay. One of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah, four home runs, pretty remarkable. That is hanging tough. He's a dangerous hitter. Because you can see from those replays, the drives of the game, he can pull a ball to right field and reach the seats, hit a ball to left field and reach the seats, hit a double over the head of the center fielder in last night's game. Will count to Tellez, two outs. Swings and misses and strikes up. So Blyer comes out of the bullpen and strikes out the side. We'll go to the ninth. It's a 3-2 Blue Jays lead. Ken Giles coming on, trying to close things up on sports. It should be great, as we have heard earlier tonight from Jimmy Campbell, that all five postseason spots have been secured. The only thing in question, and Brewers can still challenge the Cardinals for the division title in the NL Central. Ken Giles has had quite a season. 
This is his 52nd game of the season. Great ERA, terrific bonus batting average, and he's got a new center fielder in the game, Jonathan Davis. With that, the starting center fielder moves to left as Derek Fisher's out of the game. Giles, 21 for 22 in save opportunities this year. Renato Nunez, we had mentioned that they would hit for Austin wins, and Nunez will come up. Nunez has 29 home runs for the season. He was the DH in last night's game, had a two run double his first time up. He swings and misses, and Giles quickly at 0 2. That's been the money pitch, it seems like, all year for Kenny Giles, that slider. Batters hitting 195 against him. Strikeouts, he's had 79 of them in just 51 innings. Oh, and two. Cut on and missed. Giles makes quick work of the pinch hitter, Renato Nunez. Make that 80 strikeouts now in 51 in the third innings. That wipeout slider right down and away messes up the timing and messes up Nunez for the first out. Jonathan VR, the leadoff hitter, is two for four in this game. Yeah, a mighty cut at that first pitch. VR's had success against Giles in the past. He's two for four with a home run. Fouls this one down the left side. In a long way, but it's foul. That is a long way. To the opposite field. Got to be careful with him. He's got 24 home runs. I think you can throw a couple of sliders in the dirt and get a swing. Mm -hmm. Jaws ahead again, 0 and 2. And another strikeout. Came right at him. Boy, it's been a money pitch for him, a good pitch for him. He makes quick work of VR, and you keep his speed off the bases. Another one of those sliders. This time it's going to be a little bit further outside. You can see the dot on the baseball as it spins towards home plate, representing that slider. Jazz has thrown the six pitches and gotten two strikeouts. Here's Austin Hayes swing and a miss seven for seven. Thomas Pannone had an immaculate inning on the 14th of April three strikeouts on nine pitches. Giles will have to wait another game for his immaculate in. Ball and a strike. Hayes is two for four, a couple of singles tonight. Ground ball toward third, foul. Foul ball. We'll do it all over again. Giles has won a couple of games out of the pen for the Jays. Again, he's 21 for 22 in save opportunities this year. An ERA under two. The ball's in the dirt. 
Bailey throws to first, and that's the ball game. Ken Giles strikes out the side in the ninth. Jacob Waggispack will be credited with the win. Big night for the offense. Billy McKinney got it started with a solo home run rally to Les. Two home runs, and the Blue Jays win it 3-2. to two. Yeah, it took the home runs by the Blue Jays to do it. Jacob Waggispack wins his first game since August the 16th. Blue Jays bullpen slammed the door in the ninth inning from Ken Giles. Billy Mack got the Blue Jays off and running with a home run. Rowdy Telez had two of his own, and the Blue Jays take the series with a 3-2 to two win. Well, thanks for watching, folks. We'll be back with you on Friday night. Sportsnet Central coming up next on East Ontario and West. We'll get you to the Sens and Canucks on Sportsnet Pacific. Have a great night.